going to unbox Musket and Pike Dual Pack. This is published by GMT Games, which were kind enough to send me this copy. Thank you very much. It's a game designed by Ben Hull, a designer you might know from Fields of Fire, which is the World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, solitaire system, uh, so which is more modern day combat. But, but Mr. Hull has been playing or designing in the uh, Musket and Pike and 30 Years War in that space for quite some time and has several games. Uh, including some, you know, operational level games or strategic level. This is kind of a, kind of uh, crosses or walks the line between those two. Uh, one by the Sorn, which is great campaigns of the Thirty Years' War. But he's also known uh, in this arena for his Musket and Pike battle series, of which I have uh, Gustav Adolphus, or Gustav Adolf the Great, um, which uh, includes five battles from uh, this period, the Musket and Pike period. And this Musket and Pike dual pack is including two games in one, hence dual pack. You're getting this Accursed Civil War, which is about the English Civil War, or one of the English Civil Wars, and Sweden Fights On, which is a continuation in some respects of uh, Gustav Adolf the Great, um, the previous, the game that uh, I already have right here. So let's take a look at the back of the box. It's a very thick, um, I guess maybe this is what, three inches, uh, dual pack. This is kind of reminiscent of what they did with the Men of Iron series and with the uh, American, uh, the Battles of the American Revolution, where they mul combine multiple games into one pack. Here they're combining two games. Uh, these are some of the earlier ones that were published in the Musket and Pike series, so they needed a, a republishing or reprinting and a facelift. Um, you're going to get a lot in this box. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Musket and Pike series, it is a tactical series where you're going to have multiple boards uh, or maps, so to speak, uh, that... Uh, where you were that are going to be representing of the terrain and the surroundings for individual battles. Uh, they're usually double sided, so you'll have multiple uh, maps in a box. There's going to be counters, uh, and the counters are very detailed with all the t information you need from a tactical perspective. And there's, you know, not only you're going to have unit information, but you're also going to have leader information. You know, the command structure is very important. If you're familiar with the Great Battles of History, this is uh, kind of a musket and pike version. It's, it's really not a translation of that series. It, this, this is its own beast, its own series. Uh, and it is uh, relatively complex, but it does a, a very good job, in my opinion, the, the best job of, of reflecting this period, because this is a very interesting period. This is kind of a juxtaposition between medieval combat with you know swords and armor and 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 pole arms and then moving into you know gunpowder and uh, prevalent use of gunpowder and the mix between those two you know between hence the name musket and pike and so you see uh, through this period gunpowder becoming more and more uh prevalent more and more useful uh, especially cannons uh, and artillery uh, start to dominate the uh, day as this period goes on. So a, a very interesting period because it's it's kind of a, a, one of our earlier hybrid periods. I mean, the development of military technology has been going on since, you know, since the chariot and, and the bow and the composite bow and, and what have you. However, you know, this is a very interesting period of, of pole arms and uh, gunpowder uh, being uh, brought to bear. So um, it was for two players. These are two player games. Again, as with most war games, you know, people can play these solitaire and there is a command system that uh, lends itself somewhat to that. Uh, the complexity is a five. Um, I might rate that a little bit higher, but that's me. And then the solitaire suitability is a six. And I think that's probably uh, just about right there. Uh, Age is 14 and up. Um, I think they've done some changes to the counters. I don't know if they've really changed the rules much other than this is the latest edition of the rules. So it's going to have some of the cleanup and, and uh, the er errata and other things in here. So looking forward to that. 
and probably use that rule set for uh, for this game uh, if it's if it's a, uh, an improvement. Uh, I think they've done a few things, maybe to change the counters a little bit as well in here. So uh, as I said, excited to get in here. There's a lot of battles in this box. You're getting um, four with Sweden fights on, and you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with this accursed civil war, including some of the more pivotal uh, battles of that. You know, Nasby, a, a kind of a climax of um, of that uh, of that uh, conflict. Probably, and again, probably mispronounced a lot of it. But let's get inside this box here. Again, very. Uh, uh, I want to thank GMT for sending this. Um, they're really, you know, they're they're crowding up my uh, play schedule because these games are not something that you just you know play in a in an hour or two. It, it takes some time getting back into the rules, but well worth it. So um, you're going to get a playbook here right off the top. This is the playbook for this accursed civil war. So this is going to be all the individual scenarios. Uh, laid out and very nicely laid out here. Uh, you've got some general information, probably how to read some of the charts and counters, and then you have the scenarios themselves. So like this is Edge Hill, you're going to have some historical background and the battle, which is really what I really like uh, on, on that. I, I like, I use these as kind of my history. Uh, I like the inner uh, the tangible interaction that you have with the maps and the um, counters and the dice to um, play out these battles, and so I, I enjoy learning from these as much as I enjoy reading a, a book from these. Uh, you're going to have your le uh, setup on the map, and then the, you're going to have the setup here listed out uh, in charts for each of the different sides here. So uh, as you can see, it tells you where to set up and some historical notes to boot, so that's kind of interesting. I like that. Um, and then you're going to have any special rules that are different than the, the core rules, and then you have your victory condition. So you're going to have that for each of the scenarios. So this is all the scenarios for this cursed war, um, cursed civil war, I should say. So you're going to have each one of the uh, scenarios in here uh, with with that with that same um, procedure of you know the history, the history, the setup the special rules and the victory conditions. And so you have, and then you have some historical designer notes here, um, starting on page 45, that give you a little bit of a timeline and tell you where some of how this stuff fits in place. I love timelines. Uh, I might need to do a, a segment on that. And then you have a whole designer notes on organization tactics and weapons or some historical background there. And then you have the designer notes proper. So. Uh, and there's a bibliography. So if you do want to read, here you go. So that is for this accursed uh, civil war. Then you have Sweden fights on. This is um, dealing with these battles. There's uh, one, two, three, four battles in this. And this is going to have the same setup of some general information introduction. Then you're going to have the scenarios, which again is, uh, this is talking about second edition notes. So they may, maybe change some stuff in, in some of the scenarios. You have your historical background. You've got your setup on the map. You talk, it talks about the battle, the outcome. So you've got quite a bit of history. Again, I like that. Uh, then you have the Swedish setup and the charts telling you about the Swedish setup and then some historical notes there as well. Quite a big, um, quite a lot of setup there. This is a relatively good sized battle. And then you have the Imperial Spanish setup here and the different charts and notations for that. Then you're going to have any special rules, and usually there's not a ton of special rules. They're just usually uh, refer to uh, terrain or maybe a victory condition or, uh, you know, maybe a commander or something that was unique to that battle is what you usually find in the special rules. And as you can see here, not a, a lot there. And then you have your victory conditions. And then... Um, you an estimated historical victory levels and then the historical outcome. So you can kind of measure yourself versus history. So uh, I like that aspect as well. And you're going to have this for each of the battles that are in here. So uh, a lot of detail, uh, quite a bit of history in here and some notations to that. Um, so and some nice illustrations as well from the period that you see in here. 
Then, uh, then we're gonna have historical and designer notes here, talking about command structure, very, very important part of this period, well, any military period, but especially this period. Administrative organizations, tactical organizations. The, I'm gonna really enjoy reading this. Period equipment, and again, this was a very, this was kind of a hybrid period of time, you know, so you're talking about swords, pikes, artillery, uh, firearms. I mean, it was the, the merging of those and how they were used together. Uh, it's kind of your combined arms at this point in, in various different types of arms. Then you have your designer notes and then a bibliography there. So really good stuff there. So two really relatively thick uh, playbooks that are, give you all your scenarios. And then you have your battle series rules, which is this is version 7.0. So this is 32 pages, but the last page is the sequence of play, which is uh, very useful to have to, off to the side. And then you're going to have your fire combat procedure and close combat procedure. Um, here's some errata in Gustav Adolf the Great. Good, I need that for this game here. Errata for Under the, uh, Under the Lily Banners. I don't have that one. Nothing Game But Glory, and Saints in Armor. There, as you can see, there was a lot in this series um, at, that developed over time. So this is this is the, you know, seminal uh, system for Musket and Pike, at least in, in my opinion. So really, rules-wise, we're looking at um, 28 pages of rules. So not, uh, you know, for a game that, that, that that's this detailed, that's not too bad. Then you can see here some of the uh, examples of heavy infantry, light infantry, and, and some of the notations of what the different uh, icons and names and abbreviations mean. And as you can see, there's the strength points and the morale points on the counter there. And all kinds of different types of counters. And you have the example of the leaders that has, you know, like what wing they were commanding and their leadership rating. And then you have a bunch of administrative uh, or different types of administrative markers as well that's in there. Your sequence of play. Here's a glossary of terms. And so it's typical GMT two, uh, dual column, a uh, lot of text, but there's some notations that are in here that are shaded. And then there is color uh, in here. And here's some examples. Here's examples of facing. And you have some... Uh, uh, extra long counters that are double wides, um, as we might call them, this neck of the woods, and um, shows you how to use those because they're going to move and, and pivot and, and handle uh, combat a little bit differently than the normal. And here's your example of movement here. Stacking, got to have stacking. Reaction, quite a few rules on reaction here. And here's your fire combat. Several rules on that. And then you have your close combat. Again, you know, you have two different types of, of units involved here. You have, you know, gunpowder and uh, pole arms or, or swords. So close combat is, is definitely still a, a huge factor in this uh, period here. And here's morale. This is a you know key part of the result of combat in this game. Rally and reform, special unit and terrain, and then you're into that errata. So that's your that's your rules that's in this series. You're going to get several player aids. Here's a musket and pike player aid. It talks about your orders and activations. Again, the command structure for this period is very important. Your terrain effects charts all right here. Your fire tables right here and your close combat table. So there's pretty much everything you need or most what you need in a player aid. And there's gonna be two of those, one for each player. And they're color coded and they look relatively easy to, uh, to read and to use there. Then you're gonna have a Musket and Pike player aid card. This talks about interception, movement, artillery fire, artillery range. Reaction and interception. As I said, there were several rules on reaction. Your order summary chart and your determining victory. So uh, what are the victory? How do you get victory points? Like from eliminated units or captured units and stuff like that. So there's only one of those. Uh, 
but uh, you know it's dual sided so you can get to that as you need to. Then you're gonna have several of these battle boards. These are basically the different scenarios, uh, the different battles to keep your turn track and any special rules. That's kind of nice. They're in that uh, in the book, but they're also at here. Some of the key special rules that you need to know, the victory conditions, and then some more tracks here. The Swedish wings, the Imperial wings, keeping track of where those are at, and then your pursuit box and elimination unit, eliminated units. So you've got kind of this be off to the side right next to the map and keeping track of some administrative type things, but also a reference chart as well. So I, I really like that. And I like the fact that you, you've got pictures of the leaders and gives you, uh, you know, a feel for the battle with some imagery as well. And you're gonna have that for each of the battles. So these are double-sided. So there's one, two, three, four, and there's a lot of special rules there, five, six. So there's 12 battles here um, because they're double-sided. And uh, there you have it. Now, that's that's kind of nice. Like this one right here, you've got your turn tracks, victory conditions, a lot of special rules here, and then your typical boxes. So um, that's very nice, very good. And it's on good stock there as well. Then we have the counters themselves, and there's several in here. It looks like there is a one, two, three four, five, six, six counter sheets. It's on that uh, good thick gray board or brown board. I don't know what uh, the proper term is for it, but uh, it's decent thickness. And we've got the counters right there. And GMT counters punch out relatively well. I don't, I'm not a clipper on counters like this because I think they, they punch out fine, but your mileage may vary. And you've got your leaders up here. And then you get into your units and there's bands here to keep them uh, uh, together for uh, their formations or the orders that you might have there. And they're double sided. So if you're just coming new to this system, this might seem a little overwhelming. There's a lot of numbers, a lot of uh, imagery, a lot of colors. I mean, it's there's a there's a lot going on there. But uh, trust me, it's it's not it's not that complicated. Uh, Especially if you're interested in this period, this is, in my opinion, is the place to go for a tactical combat. So that's sheet one. Here's sheet two. And again, double-sided. Sheet three. And now we're getting into some of the, the double-wides, as I said there. Got a good look at those. And have some of the markers here that you're going to use in the game. Here's sheet four. Some of the, the double-sided. Sheet five, you're getting your money's worth for counters here. And I like how they do the, uh, you get the musketeers are different from your other units and see that there's all kinds of different formations or that you can tell the difference between these. Then you have your um, longer units there. And then sheet five is mostly, uh, sorry, sheet six is mostly uh, markers, as you can see here. Salvo, uh, morale, orders. So very nice. Then we're going to get into the maps here. Let's. Put the, oh wow, those feel those feel different. Okay. Uh, then you got the uh, bags. You got to have some bags, and you have some dice there, ten sided dice. Um, this insert probably will go. Uh, there's no way you can get all the. You can't put uh, put. Um, I don't know if I can get. Uh, counter trays in there but you can there's no way you're going to get counter trays with this uh, i usually bag stuff the way i did uh Gustav, i did bags like this sorry about that where i can keep track of you know this is for Brentonfield and swedish uh units so i keep track of my counters 
separated that for battle. Uh, that's what these bags are for. I might do that here, not certain, but this insert will probably not live to see uh, adulthood. Uh, these these are different. These really are different. Now, the, the, the view, the style, and the, the graphics are similar to what I've seen in the past, but very nicely done, as you can see there. Very typical of, of GMT games. But um, it's got a finish to it. Um, it's a textured finish, kind of like a, a linen of some sort. This is paper, but like reinforced paper and thicker paper, but definitely has a, a texture to that. Uh, see if you can see some of that there. And very interesting. Uh, I, I mean, I can just tell it from the touch. Uh, it's not your slick stuff there. So this is, this is going to have, um, you know, there's a smaller map here. I can't really get everything on here. So this is first Newberry, and then you have Edge Hill over here as a separate smaller map. So it's a, a, law, a large map sheet, but you have two battles on it. And then on the back is one battle, an elongated one. There's Marston Moore, as you can see there. So uh as i said there's several maps that come in here i'm not going to open up all these because i don't have enough room right here but that that texture really threw me uh that is something very different than what i felt on some of these maps uh you know this one's just single-sided but it's a large map i believe uh no there's a couple maps on this one there's a couple maps on this one and then these maps will have you know terrain map key on there as well and this one is a double-sided one. Oh, Nasby. So this is this is probably a big map on the side of this one because that was a relatively good-sized battle. And so as you can see here, you have a whole... Uh, they had some extra space, so they decided to put the uh, leaders up there. But you've got some use, movement allowance chart, your order summary chart. So you have some extra map keys. So you have some extra information on the maps, on some of these maps themselves. But, um, yeah, very nice um, maps here. Uh, again, you know, they're, they're relatively subtle. I mean, you don't see a ton of terrain. I mean, you see some slope and some vegetation and some cities. But uh, it's just enough to keep it clean. And, again, with these colorful counters... Um, they're going to pop on this. Uh, so the, the terrain of the map's not going to get in the way. I mean, the one thing you want to have with a good map is you want to be able to under, clearly see what terrain is, is coming to, into effect um, and uh, roads that you need to use. You want to make sure that it's not overlapping different hexes so you get a confusion of what terrain applies. So you want to have clear terrain, but you also do not want to get in the way. You don't want it to you know, be garish colors or or uh, something that is takes you away from making decisions about how to move your units or uh, do orders and the like. Uh, so I find these maps to fit perfectly for that. There's enough detail and color and uh, delineation of the different types of terrain to make it very useful and appealing. And then the counters do the talking in the game themselves, especially in a, with these counters that are very uh, colorful uh, and, you know, will have different formations and the like as well. As you can see, that's going to pop on uh, maps like this. Then you have, uh, as I said, and this one's a double-sided one as well. Ooh, we got some, we got some, uh, do we have some... Uh, it's all blue there. Of course, just blue because it's for Sweden fights on. Or thought it thought we might have some um, ocean there or sea. Anyway, so there's second Brettenfeld. Anyway, so there's your maps again. They are really amazing that texture. At least that first one had even more texture than the other ones a little bit. But so there's what you there's what you get in a box of. Musket and Pike dual pack, you get several maps, texture maps, mind you, uh, many of them or most of them double sided. You're getting six counter sheets here of good quality counters. Uh, you're getting all these battle boards that are specific to the individual battles to keep track of your turn and other types of information, plus the uh, special rules and victory conditions. 
you get a player aid card for uh, certain aspects, but then uh, individual player aid cards for the really key concepts in the game. Uh, series volume uh, version seven of the battle series rules, and then two playbooks Sweden Fights On and this Accursed Civil War. So there you have it. That is what you get in a box of Musket and Pike. Um, really looking forward to getting back into this. It's been a while since I played uh, Gustav Adolf this game, uh, and I, I enjoyed it, but it, it, it's going to take me a while to get back into the flow of this one. Uh, but this looks great. Uh, I'm really excited, especially to see if there's been any kind of updates on the rules from the last version uh, that I have. So anyway, I uh, hope you found this interesting. want to thank GMT Games again. I want to thank Mr. Hull for designing such an engaging series and keep coming back for more. Uh, really excited about this. Um, if you guys have any comments about this uh, series, about these two games, about this dual pack, about any of the games in the series. Love to hear it. Love to know what your thoughts are. What do you like about it? What you don't like about it? Uh, it's all fair game. Love to hear about it. Love to get a dialogue started. So that's what I have for you today. Thanks for stopping by. I know your time is precious and there's a lot of stuff out there in the world to do and there's a lot of YouTube to watch. So any amount of time you spend with me is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thanks for stopping by and have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.